Thank you, ID Drew, for a $6 super chat. Is a 5 inch dead cat frame really that much worse than an X frame for freestyle? No, not really. There are small differences that some pilots can notice, uh, especially when doing like snap rolls. Uh, a snap roll on an X frame is going to be. Uh, a snap roll on a dead cat frame is going to have a small amount of yaw mixed in. Uh, it, how much yaw depends on how well the flight controller is tuned and how much authority the motors have. But um, if you've got a dead cat, bear in mind also that some dead cat frames still have a square geometry. So if you think about it, with a dead cat frame, you can take the front arms, you can bend them back such that the front motors are out here and the back motors are in here. And you see that you now have a parallelogram. Is that a parallelogram? No, parallel. I don't know what you have. <laughs> you have, uh, you don't have a square, is my point. Some dead cat frames will push the arms back and then shorten them up so the motors are still a square, okay? At that point, you have a dead cat, but it's not really a dead cat. You have a, you have a square geometry frame just with the nose of the quadcopter pushed out. That's fine. The place where the handling gets a little weird is if you have a true dead cat where the motors, the front motors are wider and the rear motors are narrower. Okay. That one is going to have slight differences in handling, especially on like snap rolls, but it's not that big of a difference. And I'll bet that a lot of people, if you could find a way to blind test it, wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Flo the Joe. Thank you for being a patron. Continuing to clear out some questions from those in the Discord. Why is it so hard to desolder the motors in the Nazgul V2? I heated it with 450 Celsius and it still won't move an inch. Um, flow the Joe, my guess is that that is lead-free solder from the factory and it doesn't want to flow. The number one, number one thing you can do is put some flux on it. Add flux before you solder. Number two thing you can do is add a little bit of fresh leaded solder. So put a little fresh, act like you're going to, to re-solder it Heat it, put flux on it, heat it with the soldering iron tip, and then feed a little fresh leaded solder in, and the, the factory stuff should let go pretty easily. CBR from Hell asks, I'm having major issues soldering to the ESC. I've used flux, more temp, less temp. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, I have solder that's adhered to the ESC, and I can't even heat it up to remove it. Um... <laughs> I don't, I, I, like, what you're describing is not enough heat getting into the pad. I can't say whether that's your technique or whether that's your iron, uh, because obviously I'm not looking over your shoulder. In my experience, sometimes people are using a crappy iron that isn't able to get the pad hot. A lot of times people are using a very small, thin tip, and they need to have a bigger, thicker tip for those big pads. A lot of times people are not using... Uh, flux, you are using flux, so that's good. Are, you need to be using leaded solder. That will help. And then you need to just apply heat until the solder flows. Like sometimes people are not making good contact or they're not waiting long enough for it to heat up. Your tip needs to be clean and not oxidized. Um, unfortunately, there's like a million things that can cause this and there's no way for me to know which of them is, is affecting you without like being able to see your setup. Ma Le asks, uh, I hope I've said your name even somewhat close to correct. Uh, thank you for 50 check Karuna. How much does your 8S uh, weigh from the video? I'm at 866 grams, 6S 5 inch. I want to be like 6, oh God, 670 grams. 866 grams, and I want to be agile like a 670 grams. I see. Okay, so uh, I, I'm not going to promise you that it's going to fly like a six, 700 gram quad, but a heavy aircraft that needs more agility is in fact like the ideal use case for going from 6S to 8S. So I 100, if you're like, there are all kinds of places where people will go, should I go to 8S? And I'd be like, nah, you don't really need to. 6S is fine. Um, like if you're a racer, 6S is already probably too fast for you. <laughs> like, racers doing 6S, there, there are a lot of times that they're at 1,800, 1,900 kV. They're not at 2,200 kV because that extra power, they just make them crash faster. They don't have the reflexes to fly that fast. Some racers do, but many don't. So for racers like that, do you need to go to 8S? No. 
But someone with a 900 gram quad that they want to feel more like a 700 gram quad is in fact the perfect use case for 8S. So I 100% would go for it. I would get myself a set of 1500 kV motors or even maybe stick with my 1800 kV motors and just use an RPM limit, although that wouldn't be quite as good. And I would give it a try. How to use Betaflight OSD, not the VTX? Um, well, you you got to get you could get Betaflight. Oh, sorry, wrong screen. You can get Betaflight OSD working. I mean, I can show you. Uh, um, so, FPV drones have been. Sorry about that. Let me mute that. So here is my beginner build playlist. Um, and uh, there is a video here, part six, Walksnail video transmitter. This shows how to wire up the Walksnail video transmitter and takes you through all of the steps of how to update the firmware, set up the OSD and everything. So if you're trying to get your Walksnail OSD working, you're just going to ignore the wiring instructions because that doesn't pertain to your your build. You are going to need to so, you're going to need to connect your video transmitter to your flight controller. But if you're not using the same flight controller as me, then the the exact solder pads you use won't be the same. And then uh, yeah, then just set it up according to these instructions. Um, that's how to do it. Build an FPV drone in 2023, part six. That's the video you want. Um, if I had a 6S motor, but I'm running a 4S battery, will it burn the motor? Nope. The motor will make 33% less RPMs. Everything will be fine. It's going the other way that will burn the motor, potentially. If you have a 4S battery on a 6S motor, uh, the other way around, a 4S motor on a 6s battery that can fry it because it spins too fast brandon fannin thank you for a ten dollar super chat just watch your fly lens 85 review i'm getting a fair amount of prop wash on mine with the pids as tuned from flywoo haven't made the o3 naked but it could be an issue as simple as that yes brandon i, I you didn't get to see me fly the non-naked o3 very long because i accidentally smoked the esc very shortly into the flight i will say that the the, the non-naked o3 even though it's like only like whatever 13 grams heavier it flew significantly worse uh, and I'm not telling you to nakedize your O3 because there's a step in the nakedizing where if you do it wrong, you, t you just destroy the O3. And I've heard m multiple people who are like, I'll do it. How hard could it be? And then they just destroy their O3. If you decided to go this way, I would consider just buying a naked O3 from Flywoo and putting it on that quad and then saving your other O3 for, for something else. But it flies significantly better than the non-naked one. I don't know for sure. But I would say that's a, there's a chance. Uh, yeah. 